Kenya is actually considered as the largest dairy producing country in sub-Saharan Africa. As we talk today, we have about 4,000, I mean 4 million dairy cattle. These are improved dairy cattle. That's the Frisians, the Saiwal, I mean the Frisians, the Ashers, the Gansis and the Jazzis uh, uh, and their crosses with our crosses also. And we also have about 14 million. Our local cattle, including the Saiwals and the Cebus, which also contribute partly to the dairy in terms of milk production. Also the camels are there. We have about 2.9 million. And uh, the goats, dairy goats, we have about half a million in this country. But we are still trying to improve and increase their numbers. As we talk those animals, the total milk production we are having today is about 5.2 billion. And when you look at that in the figure, they are producing below our expectations. There are very many. That is annually? Or? That's annual mm -hmm. milk production. The challenge is productivity, low productivity. Today our dairy animal is producing, a, to say, the average production. They are those producing over 20 liters and whatever, but the average production per cow is, re, is about eight, 8 liters. Against a target of about 30, 25 to 30 liters. Uh, we hope that this is a kind of starting moment uh, for discussing uh, what are the different pathways for dairy development. Um, but also how to include different actors in that. Different farmers, different processors, uh, different collectors. Uh, but also important is the linkage between national, county level, in thinking about what are um, development pathways that can work on the ground. Uh, so this is a very rich and uh, hopefully inspiring conversation uh, that have, will have continuation later on. Uh, that is about uh, dairy development in Kenya, but also links to the more kind of global issues on climate change. The goal of the Greening Livestock Project has been to, um, to get localized data on livestock greenhouse gas emissions from livestock in Kenya. Um, previous to this, the, this data has never existed. No one has taken it, so this is really... Uh, putting Kenya at the forefront of, of climate engagement. Um, but alongside with the environmental data on greenhouse gas emission baselines and some promising practices to reduce them, they both reduce them but also uh, show the promise to be profitable to farmers because that's what motivates producers. We're also looking at the social dynamics of how intensification and commercialization in the livestock sector and the dairy sector uh, how do they play out? How can they be done more effectively if we're looking at a very substantial and rapid investment in intensifying the dairy sector? How can we do that in a way so that everyone can benefit in ways that are inclusive and hence the, uh, our collaboration with this inclusive low emission development project? 80% of production, 75 to 80% of the production is from the informal sector, the people who have not been organized. And the only 25% uh, only is from the formal sector. But out of this production indices, you also have uh, uh, the milk volume that ends up in the formal system, which is approximately 20 to 15 percent. So if only a small portion of the milk comes goes through the formal processing system, it means if you focus on talking to the people who are only processors, you are talking to a very small group. So if you want to, to make it inclusive, talk to the 85 percent, so that then you include the 5, 15 percent. So this is the dynamics that you're trying to bridge.